children of the fog, welcome to the bronze cast, where I uh, stand on my porch, uh, rattle my cane at the sky, and yell at kids until they get off of my lawn. And today, we're going to be talking about the big developer update in Dead by Daylight. Um, it's about time, don't you think? Um, we're going to try to keep this as short as possible, but Lord knows this one's going to be a long one because sometimes... I get a little long-winded, but we're gonna cut through the chase and we're gonna hop right in. Dev update coming, uh, the PTR is next week. Um, don't know if I'll play it, we'll see, I don't know. It's up in the air, but once again, we're not gonna mess around. So probably one of the most important things that uh, they're bringing in is the progression system. This is something that's been talked about for ages. I've, I've talked about many, many times. You're probably tired of hearing about it where, you know, at some point, all of those that have played this game for such a long time and have opened up, you know, all the survivors or all the killers or both, um, when you get a new chapter and you get a new character and you really want to play that killer or you really want to have that survivor, uh, it takes forever and forever and forever to be able to actually get the perks that you want to have on that character. And it's just like, it it, 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 it spun out of control. In the beginning, it was fine. But once, like, there's 28 killers in the game and I have all of them unlocked. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. So, um, long story short, they're changing it, finally. And what they're going to do is they're going to uh, grossly change the amount of uh, time invested. So here they're talking about um, where in order to unlock all the new perks on every character by the time the next chapter releases, you would have to play an estimated 4.1 hours every day. With the new system, that estimate decreases to an average of 1.1 hours every day. And that's how you factor in blood point bonuses, advanced perks, and offerings. So those things are still... Um, in place and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later so they're saying that they're cutting the grind by roughly 75 percent which is fantastic like the amount of blood points that you have to go through and the blood web and the frustration and nonsense just to get perks that you've already earned um, on other characters that have played with and would like to try them out on a new character to see if they work well and to play around with perk built no no just forget about it but now that's changing so <clears throat> So uh, teachable rarity is no more. Um, so now it's gonna be tied to prestige. So there's actually a reason to prestige. If you prestige in the past, that's great, more power to you. Um, I have prestige the trapper and the hag, and that's it, that's because I love them. And, uh, and it was miserable, absolutely miserable. I would never do it again. Um, but now if it completely just opens up all the rarities of the perks for all my characters, which basically I already have, um then then that's worth it but uh but so like yeah i mean once you prestige you get tier one you prestige again you get tier two open for everybody you prestige the third time you get tier three for everybody and that is way way easier to level from one to 50 uh and then it is to you know dive through blood web after blood web after blood web after blood web and uh, then it's available for all characters. Um, and even more importantly, so uh, I mean, that, that's the basics of it. But more importantly, um, all of your perks and add-ons do not reset with prestige, which is a huge thing. That was the other part that was miserable about prestige, is that you just reset to nothing again. Like, it just, oh, it was such a bad system to get, you know, some like, so I mean, the, the a lot of the bloody stuff is cool, but I mean, like the game is so full of cosmetics, like no one ever wears them anymore. Like, and uh, I do on the trapper, but that's because I'm a cool kid. Uh, so the more resets, uh, give up everything for bragging rights, or do you keep what you have to minimize the grind? That's what I chose. Like when I once I got the rest of my characters to 50, that's where they stayed. Once I got the perks that I wanted to have on them. That's where they stayed, unless I was, you know, they were in rotation and actively playing them, you know, just to make sure I could put add-ons in them, things like that. So, um, so no longer, preceding character will no longer remove their perks, items, add-ons, or offerings. Perk slots will also remain unlocked after prestiging. So you can, you, you, you start over and you don't just have, you know, just one, then I got two, and then I got three, and then I got all four perk slots like a big kid. No, you'll be able to prestige and everything is going to be there. Um, you just start over at one and go up to 50 to unlock the, the next tier of the perk. Um, and then expanded prestige, um, you can get more, you can get the uh, prestige cosmetics again still. Uh, level four, five, and six will do that for you. 
<sighs> which is more grind. But honestly, if you love the character you're playing, why not? Or maybe you already have them, probably. <clears throat> and then for completion of prestige seven, eight, and nine, we each grant one of that character's unique perks as a charm, which is a kind of neat thing. You know, if you've got a favorite perk that you run, like, you know, you can, you know, wear it on your belt, hang it on your hook, whatever the case is. So there's some things in there that still keep um, the grind alive, for lack of a better term. And, and that's been a big part of Dead by Daylight, right? Like, I mean, you, you play and you play and you play because you need blood points and blood points and blood points. And um, if they take away that grind, that's always been a problem that they've had because then what's the reason to play? Um, outside of, like, I, I like to play the game and sometimes it really pisses me off, but, you know, um, but I need my blood points and there's an event this weekend or whatever. My friends are gonna be on tonight and so, you know, I've gotta play. So here, like expanding the prestige levels so you can get some cool things and, and uh, maybe finish up, uh, you know, some uh, uh, getting getting the bloody cosmetics, um, you know, for, you know, killers or survivors that you haven't, because now you know you're not gonna reset every time you prestige. Super nice, I, I dig it a lot. Um, so Shrine of Secrets, um, the, you'll be able to buy the teachable perks um, and you will uh, get the tier one of it immediately. Uh, and then subsequent tiers of that perk will begin appearing in Bloodwebs. And then you can purchase the perk again to increase its tier. So you could just buy it once. I think you could just buy it again and then buy it again if you wanted to immediately get tier three of that perk for everybody. It opens it up for everybody. Um, interesting. And uh, so the, the Shrine of Secrets will still be a thing. Um, and I think that's a good idea. Uh, and then... Um, and then, yeah, way easy just to hit it three times, and um, then you've got to open up for everybody instead of, you know, the the grind. Uh, so that's a big thing. That has always been the elephant in the room, and it's gotten worse with every chapter, and worse with every chapter, and worse with every chapter. So, you know what? Behavior, fantastic. This has been a long time coming. Um, I mean, I won't say like six years coming, because it wasn't so much of an issue earlier on. Um, but the last two, maybe three years, like you really started to feel it. And now you absolutely feel it. Like when you're leveling a new killer, a new survivor, and you want perks on them, like it's a, it's a, it's terrible. Like, especially if the games aren't going your way, it's miserable. And so this is a great, great step in the right direction. And I, I applaud you behavior. This is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic step for the general health and sanity of the players of the game. and uh, But moving on, so transitioning to the new, new system, this is the scary part. I don't quite understand everything here, um, but uh, like it says, with many spending hundreds if not thousands of hours playing Dead by Daylight, because we're all weird, um, over the years, we want to make sure everyone is rewarded fairly. When the system releases, we'll be automatically awarding existing players an appropriate number of prestige levels based on how many perk tiers they've unlocked. If you've left all your characters at level 50 and focused on unlocking perks, your work won't be for nothing. This is, that's that's what I'm, I'm concerned about. Like, I do not want to go back and, uh, even though it would be much easier now, but I don't want to go back to other killers that I don't want to play because I need to prestige their perks to level 3. So we do need to see the, like how this plays out. I mean, it's it's worded like, you know, your work won't be for nothing. I mean, that's nice, but but what am I actually going to see after that update goes live? I'm not sure. A little concerned about that, but I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers. This is heading in the right direction. Um, and uh, also important that you don't lose anything when the system is updated. You will keep any perks and bloody prestige cosmetics you've already unlocked. Those who reach prestige of three before the update will see the special prestige icon to recognize their achievements and commemorate the perks and add-ons that they lost in the process. Um, you know, like before, obviously, like prestiging, you lost everything once you prestige. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, there'll be more live stream. Uh, matchmaking incentives, this is very straightforward. Obviously, um, if people have been paying attention, daylight, uh, Dead by Daylight's numbers have been dropping severely. And uh, if you take a look at Steam charts or anything else like that, um, and it affects queues severely. Like, um, you can, we can, that could be a whole entire story for another day, um, you know, uh, uh, about where the game is at. But uh, right now we're gonna talk about the update. And, and so matchmaking incentives, basically a blood point bonus. Uh, to whatever side is lacking at the time. Um, it ranges from 25 to 100%, depending on the demand at the time. So, you know what, if you're just hanging out playing some Survivor and you see that there's a 100% blood point bonus for going and mucking around in the fog as killer, hey, you know what, 
blood points. Go play killer or something. Or, you know, same thing. You're playing killer and you see that there's a bonus for uh, survivors. Hey, uh, no brainer. Hey, go over and, and hop on, play some survivor, you know, get some buddies together or whatever. And, uh, uh, but yeah, so they're, they're trying to incentivize to make up for uh, kind of the, the imbalance of numbers in the community and, and, uh, and, and the fact that the numbers have, have gone down. Obviously, they've come back up with the event. It's, it's, it's the way it always works. Um, but uh, but things have gotten stale and, uh, and, and it affects in queue times. And uh, that's a big complaint to the community and this is an attempt to fix it. So, hey, you know, they see it. They're trying to address it and, and add a bonus. But it also is a side effect of, of where the game has been and, and where it's been for some time. So um, good for them. Um, they're looking at it and uh, it's a positive. Uh, gameplay updates. Uh, now we get into the, the perk meta and gen speeds and things like that. So gen speeds. <coughs> um, there's nobody yet you've ever watched that's ever played killer who hasn't had games or or has talked about where gen speeds um are where they maybe should be um when we first started playing the game back in the day uh minimum like games were 10 12 minutes long um you know they could be much longer than that sometimes uh now i have games you've seen them on stream even lately where i have played this game for five years i am a rank one killer i have played every killer at rank one and games are done in under seven minutes and there's nothing I can do about it. There's very little to stop them outside of if I played that way, slugging, you know, camp, camping people out of the game, tunneling the crap out of people until they're done, um, just to try to keep up. And I just refuse to do it. Uh, so um, they are increasing the time it takes the power generator to 90 seconds up from 80 seconds. That is one survivor with no gen perks, with no toolbox. It takes one person sitting at a gen, uh, one minute and 20 seconds to finish a gen. There are five gens in the game. And <laughs> you, can, you can about imagine. Um, it gets, uh, well, obviously, once people are, if you have two people on a gen, I think it's like 44. And that's, once again, with no perks, uh, you know, no toolboxes, no anything, just hitting good skill checks. Uh, it, 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 so does, does 10 seconds solve anything? Eh, no, but you know what? It's a, it's a, I, I don't, I, I think the problem is, is you don't want to just like, I mean, if it took like, I don't even know, like if it took like two minutes, two and a half minutes to do a gen, it would be so much more boring than it is right now. Like just just pushing a gen is is not is not engaging gameplay unless you just are like you're 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 you hit every great skill check and, and it's a personal game you play with yourself. Um, it, it's not engaging and just extending them out infinitely until we hit that sweet spot. Um, I don't know if that's a great idea either. Like survivors have always needed secondary objectives and instead of giving. Um, survivors secondary objectives they've given killers secondary objectives and we don't have any time for it so while we're busy breaking breakable walls and snuffing boon totems um you know gens are just flying off the map 10 seconds to each gen that's an extra 50 seconds in the game um and and and, and will it make a difference it might and and uh, but i see what they're doing they're starting they're starting small and then and then they're going to see how that plays and then they'll work up from there that's the smart way to do it. I mean, don't blow them up and then be like, oh yeah, we gotta we gotta roll that back a little bit. Start small, work your way up. Well done. Um, second, kicking a generator will now instantly, in, instantly remove two and a half percent of maximum progress. Well, thank you, goodness gracious. Um, <clears throat> that's not a lot, but it's something. Kicking a gen without a perk is the most worthless thing you can do as a killer. If you don't know this, if, you, if you're new to killer, if you're newer to killer, literally one of the worst waste of time you can spend in your game. Um, when you kick a gen without something like pop or you don't have a rune up or you don't have, you know, a scourge hook, you know, like whatever. Like if you don't have something that is regressing those gens, once you kick it, it does no additional damage and then it, it regresses literally four times slower than it takes for a survivor to repair it um, until it is you know finished four times slower like it literally does nothing like unless they completely forget about it once in a blue moon um, you'll kick a gen in the corner of the map because it was going and you'll come back you know three minutes later and it might be dead if no one ever went back and finished it like so 
two and a half percent, that's fine. Like that's something, it, it, it feels like that there's a little bit there. Um, and then they've also adjusted a lot of the slowdown perks and uh, and things like that. So there, there, there's more to it. But you know what? It's it's a nice it's a nice start. It's a it's a place. Um, I, I maybe would have gone to five, um, but uh, but once again, they're starting small, seeing how it works, seeing how it plays out, looking at the data, not just people complaining, but looking at the data, and that's what they hope they do. Um, so. Um, so with these two changes, we hope to reduce the reliance on passive slowdown mechanics and promote increased interaction between killers and survivors. So basically what they, I mean, as, as killer, like almost most of my builds revolve around gen slowdown. Like they, they just do. Um, it, it, there's, there's not a lot of time to play fun experimental builds. Um, I mean, I know that there are killers that are due, but they also play this game eight hours a day. Um, I don't, and and so when I play, I'm an excellent killer. I'm good at what I do, but gens go fast. And if you don't have something that's slowing them down or regressing them or you know knocking them back down to zero, if you can, um, they're just there's there's nothing to them. You know they're they're not a challenge for survivors at a certain point. Um, they're they're trivial, and and so they just they're done. Uh, so relying on slowdown perks is the meta like i mean that is 90 percent of what people run and and the numbers play that out like i mean that's these are things they can look at and they're like hey this is how it works let's see if we can't do a little bit to allow killers uh you know to to play some different perks and to you know have some different builds and and that i'm excited for um will it play out that way we'll see but being that they're um, changing a bunch of perks as well, we're going to have to change as well. And I think that's good for the game. So general killer improvements. Um, average kill gates are a little lower than we'd like. Um, a sentiment echoed by many community members. Yes, to ensure killer feels like an unstoppable force to be feared, we're making slight improvements to many aspects of killer gameplay. And slight is good. You don't want to over, over buff and, and, and then have to keep taking it back like make it in increments and if that increment is not enough then then do another increment and then see how that plays out that's a smart way to do it so first we've reduced the time it takes to break walls and pallets by 10 percent so 2.34 seconds previously 2.6 um will it help it it adds up you know like with all the pallets and breakable walls like it adds up um generators kick 10 percent faster uh 1.8 seconds was two seconds doesn't sound like a lot but if you understand this game at all, you know it is all about time and efficiency. Like, is if you're playing killer, and if you're playing survivor as well. Like, I mean, being efficient with your objectives is important. Um, and uh, also reduce the cooldown of successful base of attacks by 10%. Um, so if you hit somebody, you know, when you wipe your, you know, your blade or whatever, you know, the cooldown that happens. Um, so it's 2.7 seconds instead of three seconds. Those little things help. Um, are they gonna break the game? No, but but they're helpful like all those things add up and and they can make the difference between getting it down right before a pallet or right before a window um, and not and and so those are so important um, and then they also reduce the duration of the survivor speed boost upon being hit uh, by 10% um, was 1.8 seconds now 1.8 seconds was two seconds that's another part too it doesn't seem like a big change, but those little things can make all the difference between making a really good play as a killer and catching someone at the last second before they've gotten through a window or gotten to a pallet so they can just move on to the, the next jungle gym. Um, there's so many times as killer where it feels very unrewarding to, to, to do a skillful play, uh, to, to make a good read, and and, and yet they're, they're just far enough away because they you know, immediately get that instant sprint burst after you hit them. That sprint burst should be there. You shouldn't just be able to hit them once and then hit them again. I mean, outside of like being like the Huntress and do it a ranged attack and a, and a melee attack. But, but I mean, like that should be there, but, but uh, looking at toning it down, that's a good step in the right direction. And then they tweak Bloodlust. I really don't, I don't think that this is the best thing. Um, I mean, they're, they're leaving uh, Bloodlust tier one in place after 15 seconds. Um, but instead of 15, 30, and 45 seconds for rank one, two, and three, um, it's 15, 25, and 35. Honestly, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Like if you're, this helps new killers, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, but if you are chasing someone for 25, 35 seconds, and and you haven't hit them, there's already a problem. 
Like you need to break off that, you know, bust the pallet if they dropped it and, and get back onto the map. Like bloodlust should never really be an issue for a killer. Um, if you hit that, that rank one, that's fine. Um, you know, that rank two comes five seconds earlier, not the big deal. I, I don't know if I'll ever notice it um, outside of a couple specific situations. Uh, so, but the first tier of bloodlust, you know, that one will pop up and, and that hasn't changed. Uh, I, it, 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 I don't really think I will notice it a lot, but I think it will help uh, newer killers. Um, Campion tunneling, big deal in the game, right? Um, on the survivor side, there's a clear preference for perks to grant a second chance. Borrowed time, decides to strike, dead hard. Perks of that nature help a survivor avoid certain death, leading to an extreme usage rate. This is a big no duh. I mean, like, obviously, um, and, and it's always been a part of the game, um, and, and but uh, but I think lately um, the, that uh, it has just gotten, as, as survivors have gotten better as a whole, um, I think the game has become harder and harder uh, because the maps sometimes, like map design at its core is flawed. Uh, that's a whole nother bronze cast. Um, and, uh, but, but survivors, like you start as a solo survivor and it's a terrible experience and then maybe you make a couple of friends and you start learning the maps and, you, and you're better and now you've got a regular group of people you play with. Now all of a sudden, like you're more terrifying than the killer is in most cases, you know? Um, in extreme cases, like you can't even be touched during some games. And uh, the, the answer for the killers that, you know, have, uh, you know, stayed and played hardcore um, has been camping, tunneling, and slugging. And it's genuinely unfun. I think it's the, the, the worst way you can possibly play as killer. Like, it's boring as fuck. Just absolutely, it's boring. Um, and, <laughs> and it's not as easy as people think it is. Like, just getting slugged out... Uh, it takes a lot of work, and you have to make a lot of mistakes as a survivor to, to get slugged out and have the whole entire team get one hook. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen, especially against solos, against newer players, um, and things of that nature. And it leads to a very unfun experience. And that's why I always, always try to play as straight as I can, unless I just can't. You know, unless all I can do is there's, I've, I've hooked someone in the basement and there's three people standing at the shack. You know, like, what do you do? You start whacking people and putting them on hooks until you can't whack them and put them on hooks anymore. There's some situations that force you into that, like, but um, that shouldn't be your play style, like as a killer. Like it's, it's. I, I feel it's a very low skill way to play. <clears throat> Love it or hate it, that's what it is. Like, but it's been the only answer for many people playing the game to play the game and still enjoy it and still win and still feel like they're competitive that's what the problem is because the balance has been way out of whack and and uh instead of stepping away from the game um like some of us have uh many people just resorted to the nastiest task types that you possibly do they're completely legal you can do them in the game it doesn't mean it's fun it doesn't mean it's interesting mmr screwed that too because you know it, mmr doesn't care if you get you know 10 hooks and have a 4k um, if you slug everybody out and hook everybody once, you get the same amount of MMR. Like that's, it's the dumbest stuff ever, but that's another, that's another podcast and all, like it absolutely is. So, um, but benefit from the second chance perk is they help further prevent unfun situations, mainly, uh, getting camped and tunneled out of the game. Um, and in order to incentivize a meaningful change to the meta, it was clear we needed to address these controversial tactics. Second chance perk should be nice to have, not essential to ensure enjoyable gameplay. Much like Killer, I agree. Like, you shouldn't have to run the perks, um, but, uh, and you should be able to have more variety as Survivor. You shouldn't just have to run um, DS, Unbreakable, uh, Dead Hard, and whatever else you want, Borrowed Time, which gets addressed at length here. Um, so uh, you're getting base kit borrowed time. Um, so uh, five second endurance effect after being hooked. Borrowed time has become base kit. Whew. Now, I don't disagree with this. I don't. Um, like this is going to help new players a lot. This is going to help solos a lot. Um, and, and, and that's going to make their gameplay experience better on the survivor side. Um, the, we'll talk about it more, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, I think it helps people from getting tunneled out of the game, you know, three hooks and done. 
uh, that's a good thing for the game. Additionally, the Unhooked Survivor received a 7% haste effect for 5 seconds. So, you, I, 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 assuming it's some sort of sprint burst, um, you're going to be faster. You probably uh, make actions, you know, like vaulting and things quicker with the haste effect. Um, both effects will be canceled prematurely if an Unhooked Survivor performs what we now call conspicuous act, conspicuous actions. Um, so interactions other than being chased that would improve your chance of survivor. So repairing a gen, healing yourself or others, cleansing or blessing a totem, sabotaging a hook, unhooking others, opening exit gates. You've already got this with DS. So you already know the drill. If you do something that isn't directly escaping, and which means that you're not necessarily being chased anymore, like it will cancel the effect. Boom. Um, so meta perk changes. Uh, we're going to uh, just skip through their, their garbage well, not garbage, but they're explaining it and they're giving us a couple fancy graphs. Uh, but we're going to hit right into it. So barbecue and chili, big one right off the bat. This has been a mainstay of killers for a very long time for two reasons. One, it's a great information perk. You hook somebody, you get to see where everybody else is. And even if you can't see where everybody else is, um, you can either infer that the people that you can't see um, are within your terror radius, which means they could be easier to find. Well, within the 40 meters or they popped into a locker, which means they're not doing anything anyway. Uh, and you might also have a perk that's telling you that too. Like if you have Iron Maiden, they pop out of their locker. Not that anyone's running Iron Maiden. But so, uh, but it, the, the bigger part um, is that it's really great for, for new killers. Like it's a, it's a good way to learn how survivors move, where they are on the map. Just a great all around perk. Um, and on top of that, it would give you a stacking blood point bonus for if you hook each survivor one time, you would get a 100% blood point bonus. Beautiful during events, uh, beautiful during, you know, anything like that. And then just general, a excellent blood point revenue uh, producer. Now that they have changed the entire system to where you don't need to spend millions and millions and millions of blood points, uh, to open up the perks that you want on the killers that you'd like to play, um, they're removing blood point bonus. Done. And I'm I'm all for that. That's fine. Like they're if they they've changed the reasons and the amount of blood points that we need, um, then then remove it. Like that's fine. You can still use offerings. You can still use cakes. You can still use all those things. We don't need the blood point bonus on barbecue anymore. Barbecue is fine just as it is. Great information perk always will be they're not touching that part um but uh but you're not going to play it just because you want the extra blood points because you don't need them you're going to be able to progress nicely anyway so fine absolutely barbecue a1 that's great fine change thank you for changing how we earn perks thank you um hex ruin guess what this is uh even worse than it is right now so current effect generators regress automatically and increase rate whenever survivors not working on them as long as the associated hex totem is standing hex ruin and most hex perks were destroyed absolutely like i mean they were always tricky and and uh and and very rng and and when you played anybody who who knew the maps at all like you could lose you could literally lose your ruin um, in the first 10 seconds and then undying came along and then that was a thing for a while and then they nerfed undying and then that wasn't a thing it still can be a thing but it's whatever like if you're running hex perks at this point in the game with boons being so prevalent and now being a thing added to the game like scourge hooks have been added uh for killers um you're you're wasting a perk slot and now they have officially buried ruin and that's fine like i haven't had it on a build in ages um, the massive part of Hex Ruin's appeal is not having to stop the kick generators. Absolutely. You had some passive slowdown on the map. If they're on a gen, it's not regressing. Um, old Hex Ruin was way worse. Um, you had to hit those nasty, nasty skill checks, and unless you were good at that, um, you were going to have a very bad time until you had to stop everything you were doing, and you had to find that totem. I had been there, I played Survivor through it, it wasn't fun. Great teams would still do it because they could smash out great skill checks, um, but that's a long time ago and I'm very old. So to um, but to bring Hex Ruin in line with other perks, we are reducing the regression speed um, to 50, 75 percent, 100 percent from 100, 150, 200 percent. This will reduce its power without destroying its primary appeal. Um, so it will regress a gen at the same rate that a survivor repairs a gen. There's no bonus regression there. 
after a survivor is killed, once you have put the first person out of the game, Hex Ruin will automatically deactivate. The only time that Hex Ruin in its current state was any good was if it lasted past the first five minutes and, and you actually got someone out of the game. And then, then they're struggling to keep people off of hooks, and then they're, they're, they're running around trying to get progressive on gens, and then Rune really paid dividends. But that's if it lasted that long. So at this point, Hex Rune is a dead perk. Don't run it, don't think about it, forget it exists. It's not worth the time. You're wasting a perk slot. Done. And, and, and if you have been running it, that's a bad call. Like just, you know, once in a while it's gonna last, once in a while you might get some value on it. After the changes, you will receive very little, if at any value to it. So don't bother. Pop Goes the Weasel, another beautiful perk, um, got nerfed a while back. I mean, this was a while back where it just, they reduced the amount of time you had to use it. Um, this is a great perk that came out with the clown. Love you, my bud. Um, Pop Goes the Weasel gives the killer a controlled way to remove significant progress from a generator that they're choosing giving the kicking a generator now removes 2.5 percent of the progress by default uh we decided to tone down some of the numbers to compensate which is fine you already get that 2.5 percent but now this is the key here this perk will now remove 20 percent of the generator's current not total progress so this change will make pop goes the weasel very effective against generators that are very nearly done but weaker against those with a small amount of progress that hurts a lot. Like if you could, you, you know, like there was many times where you had, you couldn't find a gen or, you know, something, you know, it was, you know, decently going, but you know, maybe like 30% or, you know, you know, you obviously can't tell, but you can hear, you get to learn after a while. And, and uh, where you could just zero out a gen, you know, it might've been at 15, maybe it was at 25%, you know, maybe it was right on that number and you could kick it and it'd be done. Not anymore. Like, if the gen doesn't have a lot of progress, it's going to take 20% out of the chunk that was finished. So if the gen was farther down the line of being finished, it's going to have a, a, a better effect, even though that has been nerfed a little bit. But if it's just a gen that doesn't have a ton, it's not going to do much of anything at all. And so a pop is going to be in a real, real weird place. And uh, I'm not going to call it a dead perk, but uh, it has been significantly nerfed. Uh, not only did they drop it from 25 to 20, which is okay, but I, you know, we get 2.5 on, on on the gen kick, which is which is great and thank you behavior. Uh, but then why not just compensate it by just dropping it to 22.5 and not do this? Um, <clears throat> Like it'll make it basically useless against Juns that aren't don't have a ton of progress on or you know like 50% done. Um, you know it'll just it'll it'll be a decent knockback on gens that are nearly done, and that's helpful. But really, they can make up that fairly decently like while you're busy chasing someone else. So I I don't know. This is this is a very significant perk to a meta 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 perk and but that's the point too and I, I try to remember that that's what they're trying to do they want us to use other perks and so we'll move on um but pop is is in dangerous country um but things do get better and we'll get to that uh so corrupt intervention uh this this is a perk that i run on every killer like i feel it's almost mandatory unless you're playing something like the blight the nurse uh billy uh, someone who has like excellent like map pressure who can get around the map quickly and break up that first gen because they're going to spawn by gens like and you've got two people on a gen it's like 44 seconds to finish a gen you might not even see someone to start a chase and even get a hit or get smacked in the face of the pallet by the time the first gen is gone and that's why corrupt is a very great perk even though it disappears after i think it's 180 seconds um and this perk makes the match more manageable, forcing survivors to come towards you um, to extend deeper into the map, repairing a generator. We aren't looking to change that aspect, which is great. Uh, although sometimes you can spawn in the middle of maps and then you've got like maybe one blocked over here and one blocked over here and one blocked over here. It's not perfect, but most of the time it does what it needs to do. Uh, moving forward, the perk will deactivate once the survivor enters the dying state. So the moment you down a survivor, it's done. <sighs> 
I don't know what I feel about that. Like, it's great that you that that uh, they're they're leaving it as it is, um, but literally you're you're taking a perk slot, and I think it's only 180 seconds as it is, and um, and then so if you find a quick down, it's gone. Like people are either they maybe even already just can turn around and be like, oh, it's gone, and like and then they're back, they're gonna be on that gen. Um, it's nice because it limits the map. And maps are not small, and gens are very hard to patrol if you are not certain killers. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but you're going to spend a lot of time running from spot to spot to spot to spot because it just is. Um, and so I, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, Corrupt is one of my favorite perks, but once again, I'm reminding myself we're trying to shake up the meta, um, and, and we'll get to more of that later. Uh, but uh, for now, once again, not as bad as I feel about Pop, but uh, but I, I see what they're trying to do, but it doesn't work the other way. Like, it doesn't extend the perk if you don't get anybody down. Like, I think that would be an interesting trade-off. Like, if you don't get that first down within 180 seconds, then it maybe it extends until you do. Like, that would be an interesting change, not just, like, basically a nerf to its duration. Um, it's already a perk that you, it, it's a single use and it's done once the, the time expires. Um, why not make it up a little bit more interesting and make, instead of making it a little less interesting. But then again, that would make it even more meta than it already currently is. So once again, understood, Corrupt is in an interesting position. Not as bad as Pop, certainly not as bad as Ruin, um, but it's a change. Tinkerer, uh, I don't use this a ton, but it is a strong perk. Uh, current effect with a generator reaches 70% progress, you receive a loud noise notification, become undetectable for a short duration. Uh, yes. Um, Tinkerer is, is great. Uh, you, it, it points out where a gen is when it's uh, about 70%. Um, and so you've got time to maybe stop what you're doing, go break that up. Maybe maybe you've got a pop load. Maybe you just hook somebody, you don't know where they are, and Tinkerer goes off. Boom. You get the undetectable status. You can get over there, maybe get a jump on them, maybe get a hit, kick that gen, and get some regression. Um, that, and, and it's a, it's a very great perk for that. It gives information, it gives stealth, and uh, you can't argue with that. It's also hitting the, the, the main target that you want to be on, and it's telling you where it is. Uh, it, so it, it's a great perk. So being able to prevent a gen for being powered is a game changer, particularly the killers with high mobility. Um, it can, however, be a little oppressive when paired with certain regression perks. Uh, so therefore, Tinkerer can now only activate once per generator, but with the base charges increased to 90, killers will have extra time uh, to approach. Um, so I, I don't know what the base charges is. I, the base charges increased to 90. I have no idea what that means. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm an elderly person. Um, but uh, Tinkerer could go off multiple times on a gen, which means that you could kick it multiple times, but that also means that they got it up to 70 multiple times. Um, so it's only going to tell you once. Uh, does that make Tinkerer a bad perk? I don't think so, um, but it but it certainly it's it is a nerf, and 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 I, I will I will speak the same truth when I talk about survivor perks. It, it it's a nerf. Um, I've used it occasionally. I think it can be handy, but I, I think the other perks for me personally have more value. Uh, but once again, they're changing the meta. No head, everybody's favorite perk. Um, I don't run it. Like I think it's shit. <laughs> Um, like if you've lost that, if you've lost that badly at the end of the game, um, and they haven't broken any bones, um, no, it is a very strong uh, thing. Like uh, to at least secure one kill. Like I don't know if that's worth a perk slot. Um, are there games where everybody falls over each other trying to find the totem, and, and you turn a, 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 a zero K with like you know two or three hooks into a four K? Yeah, absolutely. And then that's where the salt comes from because like, you know, survivors played well, they, they had a good game, um, but they didn't do the bones. I mean, it's a simple answer to it. And I know people don't like to hear that, but there's five totems. If you're playing with a team and you get, and you get murked by no ed, you're doing it wrong. Now, if you're a solo or if you were a new player, like that becomes much harder because you don't have a team that's like, all right, well, I've, I've taken out two. How many have you taken out, Bob? that's where the problem is and so no ed still going to do the same thing and um 
uh, though it falls out of favor. So this perk makes uh, for a very effective comeback tool, although it falls out of favor in high skill games. It means it just isn't worth shit against good survivors because they already know where stuff is, they have a good idea of where to look for the totems, um, or they've already been around it, or they know that they've already broken X amount of totems. That's why they include that in there. Um, so um, we like to uh, know it encourages survivors to preemptively cleanse totems have that secondary objective like that's why it's there um so we're not looking to weaken its direct strength you'll still be able to get knocked down but now uh survivors will see the hex totems aura within four meters upon activation so you'll be able to see it like now i do not believe you can and i, I don't think there are any perks that allow you to see it i might be i might be wrong i'm not up to date on all my survivor perks um but this range and it grows so the longer it goes on uh the range will increase to 24 meters over the course of 30 seconds giving survivors an excellent chance to get the totem break it and 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 perhaps escape with their lives i i'm you know what i i'm not a fan of noid and i i don't use noid um and uh but but i i see where this can be very helpful for 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 new survivors and for solo survivors where they don't have that level of communication and they don't know that everyone every every totem has been busted except for the one in the shack and they left one, that one on purpose so they know where no one would spawn or you just break it and then no way doesn't spawn at all uh so either way like it's fine um like it's gonna help it's gonna help survivors uh who are not uh so experienced in the game and it's it's gonna help solos who who you kind of get crapped on in this game um uh, because that's how they choose to play or you know they just only have time for a couple games and their friends are not whatever um so it, it's a fine change it's no way i i don't care um <laughs> skirt shook pain residence uh it's this is an excellent perk like it does a little bit it, it does a decent amount of regression i think it's 15 percent, and then it also um makes the survivors scream because there's a small explosion knocks them off the gen which also allows dead man's uh dead man switch to activate and block them off the gen so now all of a sudden you you've got regression um you see where they are so you can you know beeline and uh and and perhaps start your next chase and keep snowballing and keep pressuring the map and it's been blocked so they can't go back and just tap it and stop it from regressing um i don't think it regresses when it's in the pause like it doesn't work with ruin and it doesn't work with anything else so i can't imagine that it works with this but it does stop them from just you know it, it blows up and then they just quick tap it and then just keep going um but now it will so they're removing the noise notification um so it will not explode instead of exploding effect general and all spark pond losing progress and survivors will no longer scream so you will not see it um now well actually it does not say you will not see it but you will not get the explosion it'll just be a spark so i don't know we'll have to see that uh see how that plays out but they, they they took like three quarters well not three quarters i suppose two thirds of the effect of the perk out it is a direct nerf to pain residence and this is a perk that just came out not all that long ago um and uh i i don't know how i feel about that one it, it is nice and and the thing is is that screwed sharks there's only four of them on the map and and not every hook is a scourge hook. Not every hook can be a scourge hook. Um, like it, sometimes it's just it's too far away, or maybe you, you know, like you had that you you needed the regression and you needed some information, and you you third hooked someone on a scourge hook. Now you've lost one. Now you've got three across the entire giant map. Um, like I, I like the scourge hook idea like I, I think it's a great addition to the killer's toolkit um but this was this was a good perk um i don't think it gave you too much um i think paired with dead man switch that might have been a little much um but the information was fine like i i i, I don't see a problem with that now to get information you would need to run uh pain resonance and barbecue you know or, or something along those lines if you wanted that same level of information um that's fine I don't think it's dead. I think it still serves a purpose. And there are also, you know, other Scourge perks that can interact with things like that. Um, but once again, direct nerf uh, to a fairly popular perk. So we're going to jump into the Survivor meta perks. Oh, good Lord, Dead Hard. Welcome to Dead Hard Country. Uh, dead Hard is such a good perk. Um, there are many people that would say that one of these two perks, um, even between killer and survivor for the value that you get for it are probably the best perks in the game 
and, and everybody's going to have a personal opinion and that's cool um this is mine um like and this is this is through lots and lots and lots of playtime. um even when dead hard was was not working you know super correctly for the longest time dead hard still was probably one of the strongest perks in the game because one it granted you distance and two it granted you immunity so um good survivors like uh could use it to you know get to a pallet to get to a window uh, they didn't even need to dodge an attack but it gave them that extra distance that they needed uh to make that play time and time and time again even if you made good plays even if you you know had some great mind games um and the survivor made a mistake and that's what you should be able to capitalize on as killer that's literally how the game should work no you tap a button and now you you zipped off into the other direction and you know you've, you've done a vault or you dropped a pallet or you got through a window <sighs> dead hard everything like playing squads like everybody's got dead hard like half your game you're just you're just waiting for them to finally use their dead hard so you can actually swing or try to bait it out you know if you got a killer with an interaction like the wraith where you bring up his bell that's a great one that that uh that uh, draws out dead hard really well or even just a quick flip of your mouse like so they can see that movement if you're just running in a straight line you can see the survivor looking directly back at you they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting and then once you get close enough the best thing you can do is killer is just tap that button real quick when you're right up up on top of them and uh and then just do a quick swing and down them. um even even then there are there there are good survivors that with the distance that you're, you're creating because of dead hard and because you're on them just chasing them waiting for them to use the dead hard you know they have um you know you're already at you know a situation where they've escaped through a ballot time and time again um so uh two main ways and they address it here two main ways dead hard is used to dodge a hit and for distance to get to a nearby pallet or window every time uh, latter case, there's not much the killer can do, exactly. Um, therefore, Dead Hard will now provide the endurance effect for one second. So you're going to get one second of invincibility, like like borrowed time, um, which is a base kit now. Um, when activated, if you time it right, you'll prevent the hit and gain movement speed boost. Um, uh, so you'll prevent the hit, so you basically get an extra health state for Dead Hard, uh, just like you would have for borrowed time. And I think that's fine. Um, this will remove dead harding for distance and make it usually and make it solely used to dodge hits which killers can anticipate and even bait accordingly with movements or you know you know starting up a starting up a rev on your chainsaw or whatever you can you can you can bait it out but if you hit them they're going to have the borrowed time effect um, which is now the endurance effect and uh, will zip off into the distance a little less uh, less amount of time than before but they're not going to lose a health state and end up on the ground because they're already obviously injured to use dead heart. Ah, okay, decisive strike. Okay, before I even talk about this, uh, decisive strike needs to be in the game. Decisive strike absolutely positively needs to be in the game. Um, it is it is a as an excellent tool to help stop being tunneled. Um, it, it needs to be there. Um, but this is they they changed it. They just reverted a little bit of it. Um, so one of the decisive strikes main appeals is is efficacy thank you of preventing tunneling and late the upcoming base game changes we expect decisive strike use to drop in usage slightly for the most part we find the perk to be healthy for the game and easily avoidable for killers who choose not to tunnel and unhook survivor yes um sometimes sometimes like i will hook some i will i will down someone and i have no idea like we'll get into it um but uh that said at the end of the match there's often nothing to do that can prevent a survivor with knee strike from escaping it's very true there's so many times at the end of the game where you're fighting for that last couple hooks and you know what you've knocked someone down and uh you know they're crawling towards the exit gates there's plenty of time for them to do so and you know you know that when you pick them up you're going to get de-striked at the exit gates sit through five seconds done and they're going to teabag you out the door worst feeling ever not rewarding sucks um but moving forward the safe strike will now deactivate once the exit gates are powered i think that's great um it's the end of the game like i mean like you like i that's fine like uh that's that's the one time where the size of strike feels the absolute worst like you're at the end of the game you're desperately trying to get as many hooks or, or try to turn the game around um and so once uh once something like that happens and you you 
you're getting some multiple downs and they're they're playing super altruistic and you're putting person after person on the hook and then all of a sudden you, you've got one person left or you know, there's one person or two people left in the match and you have to choose who to pick up and you can't remember when they were last hooked or if it's been 60 seconds or not and then they ds and go out the door now they can't and I, I, I think that's great, honestly. Um, as a killer main who has suffered that fate many times, even though I knew it was gonna happen, you know, I wasn't just gonna let them crawl out the door and not take the chance that the DS had expired. <sighs> it's, it's just one of the worst feelings in the game. Like it just, it sucks for killer. Um, and so at the end of the match, uh, moving forward, decisive strike will now evacuate, deactivate once the exit gates are powered. So after all five gems are done, um, D strike is now no longer on the menu. In addition, the stun duration has reduced from five seconds to three seconds. Uh, we'll also be simplifying the description of the perk. Decisive strike will now be canceled by conspicuous actions, which we covered before. If you work on an objective or you heal someone, it cancels the D strike effect because obviously you're not in the danger of being tunneled if you have time to work on a gen or bust bones or or heal another survivor. Like, so here's the thing about the five to three seconds. Like, I believe back in the day it used to be three seconds. And then the problem was is that people figured out that you could use enduring to basically negate decisive strike. So enduring now it, it, it shortens up the stuns out of palette, which is great. Like it's a it's a it's a solid perk. Um, it's not something that I run a ton of unless you're running like a spirit fury enduring build. Um, which can be fun, just charging through a pallet and like being like, surprise! That's a great feeling. Uh, but not necessarily meta. Um, so, uh, but it, I believe it used to be three. And then, so like when, when you would use Enduring, like Decisive Strike would almost be nothing. Like it was, it was just over a second. I think someone said it was like 1.8 seconds of stun, which is literally nothing. You could just get stunned and boom, and you would be on the chase. Like you could use Enduring and the Clown was a great example. Like you could drop a bottle, pick up a survivor, um, eat their bar, eat their DS at any time in the game, um, and then be stunned for under two seconds. And then they would get slowed down for the gas and you just turn around and basically hit them. Like, so now that Enduring no longer um, uh, lessens the, the stun duration, they're bringing it back to what it used to be. Um, one of one of my one of my wonderful viewers on the stream last night, I think it was Abel. Was it Abel? I think it was Abel. Hi Abel. Um, uh, was talking about the the nerf to it. It's it's the way it used to be, uh, and then when they changed enduring to no longer affect DS, then they're just moving it back to where it used to be. Um, three seconds of plenty of stun to get to a window, to get to a pallet, to get away, um, and uh, and it always was before. It's just that they changed Enduring to no longer affect it. So so now they're just changing it back since Enduring can't shorten the stun of DS. Now it's just back to where it used to be. Uh, I don't think that's an issue. I think I think the end of the match is gonna cause like far more issues um, for people being angry about it than, than the shortness of the stun. It's still plenty of time to, to get away, get to a window, get to a pallet, and just put some distance between you and the killer um, and not end up on the hook, obviously. So um, uh, once again, as, as someone who doesn't play a ton of Survivor, I believe D-Strike needs to be in the game. You need to be able to protect yourself against that. Uh, killer's Tunnel, Killer's Camp, um, and, and you need to have some defense against that. It's a, it's a good perk. I, I don't want to say it's a healthy perk, but it's a good perk, and, and it's probably one of the strongest perks in the game. Uh, there are very few things that can change the game like DS. Um, and uh, in that same breath, I'll mention Borrowed Time, um, another game-changing perk. Uh, but also it has directly to do with tunneling and camping and uh, and and I, I I'm not a big believer in those things I, I do it as little as possible unless the situation requires it mm -hmm. um, But here much like D, D strike uh, the perk gets much of its popularity by granting counterplay against the camping killer It yes, absolutely you run in borrowed time that person can't get slugged to the floor immediately um, considering that borrowed time's effect has been added to the survivor's base kit, we need to update the perk according, which is appropriate. Borrowed time will now extend the duration of the insurance effect by survivors by 6, 8, and 10 seconds and increase the movement speed bonus duration by 10 seconds. So you're, you're going to get an extra long, I think that's going to be 15 seconds of, of haste, uh, so movement speed bonus. and uh, And then, but they can be canceled if they perform an action. 
that isn't just you know jumping over a pallet you know once again we covered you know totems generators healing um you know the usuals so um but uh so borrow time probably won't even be used anymore um i mean i think people might still because that's that's a enticing thought to let people get further away but but this is a good meta change where they've added it to the base kit which is it, it, it's going to be problematic but it's going to be good for newer players and solos um and and so you can put something else in here um you, you can you can run something other than borrowed time because everyone's going to have it um if you really really want to be the borrowed time king then then you can run it but it's base kit so i i wouldn't bother like it's plenty of time for you to get off the hook and uh and and even if you get hit you still get a sprint burst on top of your haste that you already had um like there's no need to run borrow time anymore and and so where this per i'm not going to say it's well i'm not going to say it's worthless like ruin um excuse me there we go that's better thanks um but uh but it's just not necessary anymore because they've made it basically base kit a slightly less impressive version but it still um it still stops that that hit by the killer and it's still and, and on top of that it's giving you extra speed on top of it to help put some distance from that situation and and, and let your teammates handle it you know so uh and that's i uh, that's fine like it's not a dead perk it's it's now base kit it just makes that base kit boost better iron will iron will got iron will got nerfed like iron will is uh most of what i'm reading from people who are big iron will enthusiasts i'm even an iron will enthusiast i play it like i play bill i play jane when i play survivor they're loud af and uh iron will great perk but so sucky as killer like it's so hard to find anybody um like i i, I know they're somewhere um i know they went off in this direction and in between iron will and you throw some shadow step on there or, or, or other things like that like you'll never know where they are unless you search every nook and cranny and that takes valuable time that you don't have um it also really hard counters other killers like the spirit um i think nurse is, is kind of affected by it and, and just killer gameplay in general but i don't know i don't know if they've gone too far um so perk allows a lot of skilled players to mind game more effectively in many areas by silencing the grunts of pain after you've been injured uh, to address its high usage rates we're lowering the grunts of pain reduction to 25 75 uh, 75 percent at max um instead of 100 percent so you'll still be able to hear survivors um uh and and that's like people are not happy about this change and i understand uh, additionally iron will is no longer active when exhausted so if you use the exhaustion perk you know if you're if you're injured and on and on uh you know have your iron will if you dead hard you're exhausted you no longer have iron will um so like they slap the shit out of iron will let's be honest like iron will is probably not going to be used a ton um you know if they just made it for like when you were exhausted like after using it dead hard um or you know maybe maybe you sprint bursted or lied and, and took a hit and got some distance um but but yeah like iron iron will got punched in the face um uh, we'll see how that plays out uh self-care um most most squads i play against rarely use this this is not a very common perk but it's very common for uh solo survivors it's very common for newer players because it sounds great you can heal at any time and reduce speed if you don't have a med kit i don't think it's a bad perk i don't think i've ever been a bad perk but i think there are better perks to run uh, but they did change it. So uh, reducing uh, its strength, self care, its heal speed has been lowered to 25, 30, and 35 percent. I think it was 50 percent on the four um, at the top end. And the item efficiency bonus has been removed entirely. So you would get you would get more heals out of a med kit, um, especially generally paired with like botany knowledge. Very strong combination. If uh, especially if you're playing solo and you, you've got a good decent med kit on you, uh, you can very much heal forever. Um, and then and then if you're running like boon circle of healing like you just the healing became trivial so um this is fine um but once again i don't see these uh when i play a really good squad i, I don't see a ton of self-care like it's it's just not a thing um so i didn't need it did it need a nerf for adjustment i i don't know um i think probably could have done one or the other um either the item efficiency bonus they could have gotten rid of um you know or drop the percentage speed 
Um, I don't think both was necessary for self care because I don't see it that often uh, when I play really good squads. Like it's not generally necessary. Um, spine chill. Um, this perk sucks so bad for stealth killers. Like uh, stealth is is is, uh, is is very is trivialized by this um, by this single perk. Like and you only need one person on the team to run it. Um, so, uh, but the perfect cells delivering survivors where the killer is approaching in higher skill lobbies, in higher skill lobbies, the vault speed increase that you would get with it because you would get a, a, a increased action speed, um, both then like repairing a generator as well, things like that. Uh, and they uh, would like to change that a little bit, but the vault speed became kind of the kind of the thing. Um, you know, there'd be entire vault speed builds for it. Um, spine shield will only activate as killer has a clear line of sight to the survivor. This will remove the awkward counterplay where you had to, as a killer, um, if you're playing a stealth killer, you would have to like look at something else and be like, doo -doo 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 -doo. so spine shield wouldn't go off. Um, you knew where they were uh, because of something, or you saw some scratch marks and you were doing your job as a killer. Um, and you'd be have to have to like moonwalk and like look up in the air or look off to the side um, You know and, and just to avoid the possibility that they were carrying spine chill which completely stops you from being a stealth killer So this is a fine change with one caveat And because I've been reading about a lot of the reactions and, and some of them are hilarious, but some of them aren't so hilarious um, like I've seen a lot of people even like one of one of the streamers uh, that, that I watch from time to time plays uh, a decent amount of survivor but play some killer too um and but they are uh nearly legally deaf and and while it's it's super tricky like i mean obviously you know you want everybody to be included on the fun um the spine show was a big big perk for people uh that were hard of hearing or or had hearing problems um it allowed them to still enjoy the game and i think it still will allow them to to, to enjoy the game like it's still going to do basically what you needed to do um but but uh, but it's also tricky to be all completely inclusive, like for everything and everybody. Like I I, I feel bad for the folks that are, are speaking up. Um, you know, they enjoy the game, they have love for it, and and now uh, a perk that allowed them to um, play uh, play more normally, uh, play better without. Because Dev I Daily is a huge huge game based off of sound. Um, there's few that I've seen that rely on sound more. Um, Hunt Showdown is, is probably one that, that does, but it's similar in that fact. It just does it better, um, quite frankly. Um, so, so that's a caveat there. That's my asterisk by Spine Chill. Like, am I happy that, that you're going to have, uh, you know, not just instantly be detected as a stealth killer because of a single perk, perhaps only run by one person on the team? Yes, absolutely. Spine Chill sucked for killers, especially if you enjoyed anybody. Um, who played stealth like it just trivialized them um, you could be run and you could be gone you could alert your team everybody knows who you are everybody knows where you are like it's just dumb but the downside is is that it was a it was a good perk to help people um, that uh, that have issues hearing um, to, to play the game and to enjoy it as survivor so that's a mixed bag like I'll put a little asterisk by that um, I'm, I'm glad it's changed I, I'm glad that it's not going to be a uh, I mean, it's still going to be usable, but it's whatever. But the asterisk for, for folks, that this, this was a nice tool uh, to be able to play and enjoy the game, um, even even with, uh, you know, that disadvantage. Um, and then the vault speed is getting removed entirely. So, and, and really it does. Like, I mean, like they, you would get a speed up for your action on gen, your speed up for action on vault. And um, it just, I mean, it's there to alert you, I guess, like, non-meta perk changes so this is where things get interesting so we've we've nerfed a bunch of the meta perks right you know we've hit we've hit pop we've hit barbecue we've hit dead hard we've hit ds um you know like some things have gotten the serious nerf bat that try to shake up the meta here's what they're doing um in uh to to spice it up overcharge I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna light a fire under overcharge right now. Overcharge is always an interesting perk, you know. I loved playing the doctor early on. Um, he was my first killer, and it was a neat perk when people couldn't hit skill checks. Um, I still struggle to hit those skill checks, uh, especially if it's bouncing around the screen. 
Uh, but but competent survivors are going to nail it most of the time. Once in a while they'll miss and you'll get some gen regression out of the deal. And that's fine. But now, so along with its current effect, so it still does what it does. It places that charge in there and it's going to give you that hard skill check. Mm. Generator's regression will grow from 100%, which is at the same rate that the survivor repairs it, <clears throat> to 400% over the course of 30 seconds. And you cannot just run by and tap the gen as a survivor because it will trigger the overcharge effect and you will immediately lose, is it 10%? It might be 8%. It's either, it's somewhere in between 8 and 10%. So you cannot just tap it. You will lose more, <laughs> you will you, you'll lose progression and then the survivor and then that killer can just kick it again and put it on there again and uh, you're, you're going to lose that fight like it's gonna it's, it'll take a while um but if you kick a gen with overcharge and and you've chased somebody off and everybody else is off doing somewhere else like within 30 seconds most of that gen is going to be done um so overcharge <clears throat> very interesting change um <clears throat> In a very exciting change because it it it, uh, it stops that whole the whole entire thing where you know you you've done a great job and you've made a good play and and maybe you've hooked someone and you got you know pop on a gen or you don't have it and you're kicking it which is worthless but all the survivor runs around the circle and then just taps it and it stops the regression. This is is a, is a very great change to this perk that wasn't otherwise used a lot. So I'm uh, calling it now, overcharge meta coming your way. Remember not to tap the gens as you're running by. Um, eruption, after release, fairly safe numbers, but upon reflection, we're comfortable with decreasing them. We've upped the generator regression penalty to 10 and the duration of the incapacitated effect to 15, 20, 25 seconds. Eruption is not a bad perk, <clears throat> but uh, but for the longest time until the changes, like, I mean, it, it's requiring you to, to kick a gen many times you know when you don't have something else when you don't have a pot backing it or you don't have something else um and and uh this requires i believe it requires you to um when you down a survivor if you have kicked a gen it's highlighted in yellow um that was going to have i believe an eight percent regression or a nine percent regression they've moved it up to ten percent regression and then the survivor if there was a survivor working on that gen uh, then they would get the incapacitated effect and they couldn't go back to work on it for x amount of seconds now it's going to be 15 20 25 at different perk levels um is, is that gonna is that gonna rock the world mm, i don't know like i don't i don't think it's the worst perk in the game because there's plenty of those <laughs> um but we will play around with it and we will find out uh knockout um uh, if you're a super slugger, knockout is knockout is your friend. Uh, it, it it loses a little value when you're playing against uh, teams because they can communicate their location, and most everybody has a good idea about the maps. You know, I'm I'm you know wherever direction from the shack. You know, I'm 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 by a lit gen. You know, 40 feet away from it. You know, it's it's not hard to do. So knockout gets a little trivialized. But uh, but if you are playing against you know solos or or uh, people who are newer at the game. Um, not having that aura information is real tough and, uh, and, and that can really lead to some super slugs. Um, in addition to its current effect, knockout would also cause dying survivors to crawl 50% slower for 15 seconds and reduce their recovery speed by 25. Um, interesting add-ons. Um, it's not a meta perk. Um, it encourages slugging, which I don't do a ton of. Um, but it, but it, but it does its job okay. Um, but it does its job okay against solos and randoms. And, and new players um it, it doesn't it's not something you want to run if you're, you're running up against good teams all the time because uh, they know where everybody is anyway you know they might not be able to see them but you can you can talk and, and you can call it out cholerophobia um even with the changes um nothing worth talking about there um so this slows down um healing progress if you're in the terror radius by a certain amount um people tried to use this back in the day you know like when uh, survivors would like heal in your face. They drop the pallet and then just stand there, you know, and just med kit or self heal and keep doing that until they were finally, um, finally healed. Very frustrating thing. Collar phobia would slow that down a lot. And I mean, it, but uh, just not something you're going to run. And uh, increasing the speed of skill checks by 50% if you're in my terror radius, that I don't think that that's 
that's gonna be a game changer. We'll try it out, like maybe with like a nerving presence so we have like a super big terror radius. Um, and, and uh, you know, maybe people will miss some skill checks. Like, I mean, that's possible, but otherwise, uh, nothing there. Um, Dark Devotion, interesting perk. Um, it's only related to hitting the obsession, but now um, Dark Devotion will now activate whenever the obsession loses a health state. Um, so it can be, um, instead of just a regular M1 attack, it can also be a ranged attack, like the Huntress is, you know, like a, um, like a hatchet, you know, like things like that that aren't, um, you know, it'll still transfer uh, your terror radius uh, to the survivor, is what it does for X amount of seconds. I want to say it's like 30. It's not bad. It's an interesting perk, especially if you like stealthy, sneaky builds. Um, Jolt, one of my personal favorite. <laughs> Um, like it, it, it doesn't do the most regression, but it's passive. Like you don't have to go stop and kick a gen, um, uh, and and for that reason, like it's a little less. And you can also hit multiple gens at once, depending on where you down somebody. And there's a little bit of RNG and luck to it. Sometimes you'll down people, and you know all the gens that are in your terror radius or that 32 meter radius, um, they're already they're already done. You're not going to get any value out of it, but. They are changing it so instead of having a cooldown, and that wasn't terrible, I think it was 60 seconds, um, now there's no cooldown. And uh, so, so welcome, welcome to uh, the overcharge jolt meta, ladies and gentlemen. Like, that's totally gonna be a thing. Uh, Lethal Pursuer, this I have never, I've run just to see what it looked like in a couple games, and I think it's worthless. Um, like, you've got a seven second or eight second like look at survivors while they're on the exact opposite side of the map to you. Can this be a helpful perk to start your first chase? Yes, it can. It absolutely can. Are there better perks to run? Yes, there absolutely are. There absolutely are. I, I would not recommend running this perk unless you are really, really struggling in the early game. And if you're struggling in the early game, I would recommend running uh, Corrupt Intervention even in its current state, well, in its future state. Um, that's gonna, you know, help you find your first person and uh, at least stop those far gens from just immediately popping. Um, but uh, if you're running Lethal Pursuer, that's fine. Um, no judgment. Uh, but we'll now extend the duration of all aura reading effects by two seconds. So it's going to give you some, some use afterwards. So like if you're running Lethal Pursuer and Barbecue, you're gonna get two extra seconds of Barbecue. I don't know. Like, uh, uh, not something that I'll be playing. Um, Scourge Hook, Gift of Pain, the person also shipped with safer numbers, so they're increasing the Axiom of Speed penalty to 10, 13, 16%. This is an interesting perk that I have not used. Um, a lot of people were using Gift of Pain. Um, it is a, a very decent slowdown. It's like three stacks of Thana um, on a survivor just for hooking them. The problem is, um, is that, well, the problem and then part of the bonus and what, what people are using it for um, is that not only do you get that slowdown on that survivor, but they've also got to go break a totem to get rid of it. And being that as killer, you had no way to break totems at this point until they released Shattered Hope, which is stupid. It should just be base kit. We're going to have a rant about that. Um, now uh, that person has to break and then boom, like there's, there's one less totem on the map. You're not probably running totem perks. Um, and so like it's one less boon that they can place. Um, and you could also use it for Penimento. And Penimento is a very cool perk. It's just that you don't have any way outside of now having Shattered Hope to break a totem, uh, break a boon totem, um, and then replace it with one of your own. You don't get to do that. You can just put it out. And uh, so having survivors break totems for you so you could put down Penimento was an excellent combination. Um, plus the passive slowdown um, that they would have until they broke it. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I might play around with it a little bit. It's an interesting perk, um, and, and it does have some decent effects. <coughs> uh, Thana. Thana has been, been around for many, many moons, my friends. Um, we're increasing the action speed penalty to maximum of 5.5% per survivor, so it will max, some, it'll max out instead of at 20% which is what I believe a full four injured survivors will give you. Um, it will max out at 22%. Um, it's baby steps. Uh, Thana, to, Thana is a good perk um, if you have a good killer that puts a lot of pressure on. But 
we're also in a place where the healing meta is very strong, the circle of healing. Um, they have made some adjustments to self-care. Is that enough? Um, like I use it on the plague because like ideally you want everybody injured and sick as the plague. And if you're playing good teams, they're not gonna cleanse. So they're, they're, they're gonna eat that 20% slowdown. Um, so on certain killers, I think it's very good. Um, but luckily, you know, Plague is not the top killer in the game, and, and most people can, can get through it. So um, uh, it's a fine change. It's a small change. Incremental change is better than no change at all. Cheers. All right. So, <laughs> Jesus, Monstrous Shrine has been turned into a Scourge Hook for um, Monstrous Shrine uh, many times has been argued to be the worst, um, <laughs> the, the worst, uh, killer perk in the game. I don't know if that's true But I, I can tell you that outside of if it, unless it was required for something or it was a meme I have never ever run monster of the shrine. I still probably will not Long have we waited monster of the shrine has received a rework this perk will now convert all basement hooks to scourge hooks Additionally scourge hooks will now grant uh, 10 to 15 20 percent faster entity progression, but only if the killer is not within 24 meters <laughs> So they, they've added an interesting effect. So basement, um, super scary, but only if you are not by it. Although going into the basement will activate your other scourge perks. So if you're using like pain resonance or um, you know uh, a gift of pain or whatever, you know floods. Of, is it floods of rage? I think I don't remember. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it is. <sighs> um, then um, it's going to activate those perks that you have. Um, whereas otherwise, hooking in the basement, which is always a decent play for killer, unless you're far away and really, really trying to get someone in the basement. Um, basement is, is, is most times the strongest position on the map for killer. Well, I mean, it is. Like, you know, someone's got to enter the, the building. They've got to find the door. They've got to get down there. And, and if you are at the end of the game and you're camping someone out or, or whatever, like, I mean, it's, that's a tough situation for that survivor that's on the hook. Like, that's why, you know, basement is a dangerous, dangerous place. Um, turning the scourge hooks is a fine idea. Um, increasing the entity progression by a max of 20% is interesting. That means that your stages will last 20% shorter. Um, meaning people will need to be on the ball with their saves but uh but only if the killer is away from the hook so they are encouraging not camping um and, and that's good i like perks that do that like like make your choice uh devour hope fantastic perks because they encourage you to not be by the hook when that person gets unhooked and you get a delightful effect because of it like i like those incentive based gameplay choices um, I like that it encourages you to play well and not just face camp out a person. Like, and, and then you get rewarded for it. Um, if totems uh, weren't as bad as they currently are for killer right now, I would run probably run Devour Hope on every build because I think it's fun and I think you earn it by playing well and by playing, um, you know, just, just a straight game. You know, you just want to hook people. You want to have good chases and get good downs and have good hooks and have an exciting game. <coughs> And if you do those things, uh, Devour Hope re rewards you. Um, so I, I think that's great. But um, but this, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would run it. Um, I mean, like I think it's still a meme. Um, but the but the additional uh, progression is interesting. Um, scourge hooks being available in the basement, so you can still utilize your scourge your scourge hook perks um, is interesting as well. Uh, do I think that brings it? You know out of obscurity i i don't think so i'll dig around with it but I, I i think it's still monstrous shrine it's it's whatever <laughs> um survivor perk buffs so calm spirits get in the buff in addition to calm spirits great effects you can now open chests and cleanse and bless totems silently albeit at a reduced speed so and that goes down so uh the the the, the speed penalty goes down with the ranks i uh, don't think anybody's really going to use it sometimes you know you would play the the odd um, the out of clown or doctor game and uh, you know all of a sudden you'd be like why is nobody screaming you know I just hit him with a bottle they didn't make a single sound that would suck 
Um, but it, it's not a meta perk. Um, it never will be. Um, and I don't think um, I don't think the silence portion. I mean, you can hear totems being broken. You can hear chests being opened. Um, but but the slowdown to it, I think, sort of just hurts what they're trying to do there. Um, and, and that's fine. Like I, I don't want everybody running around not screaming. So uh, but that's there. That's there. Sab 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 sab. Um, I, I hate the sabotage of hooks and now the saboteurs can now identify scourge hooks. So they, so survivors running saboteur will now be able to, to see your scourge hooks. It doesn't mean they couldn't break them before. They just couldn't tell which ones were scourge hooks so they can plan an attack. Um, so if, if, if scourge hooks become a, you know, kind of the, the standard going forward where some part of your perk set is going to be by scourge, scourge hooks, Saboteur will be have some have some decent use there. Um, it, once again, they could still break those hooks before. Scourge hooks were not invincible, but now you can see where they are if you're running the perk as survivor. That's a bummer. Um, Botany knowledge now increases healing speed by 30, 40, 50 percent, up from 11, 22, and 33. So here is where changes to self care don't matter so much because that went up about the same amount as self-care went down. And so, and, and most times, if you would see people actually actively running self-care in a game, it was usually paired with botany knowledge, so now it just comes out in the wash. There is no net change there. It's almost exactly the same. Not quite. I mean, there's a few percentage points off, but you, but, but you see the point there. So they buff botany knowledge to cover up the self-care got nerfed. Um, it, whether that's intentional or just like want people to run more botany knowledge, I don't know. Uh, but uh, that that combination will still be almost as good as it is right now. Um, off the record is interesting. So upon being unhooked, you gain the endurance status effect for 60, 70, 80 seconds. 80 seconds of the borrowed time effect. Um, <clears throat> it's lost upon a doing a conspicuous action, which makes sense and that's the way it should be. So if you touch a gen, a totem, you heal somebody, uh, your endurance effect goes away. That's the way it should be. The problem is, yeah, is that 80 seconds. So um, with the with the built-in borrowed time changes, and you top that off with uh, on the re off the record, um, like in game is going to be really tough for killer. Like if you've got three or four people. And they've all got base kit borrowed time and maybe a couple people are running off the record like you are going to have a very bad day <sighs> this is where this is where the things that are good for new players and good for solos um will become very problematic against good teams um you're gonna have a <coughs> so many people running around um with basically having borrowed time in a bottle but now it's on your perk um like it's i i think it's gonna be problematic um i i understand what they're trying to do but but also this the, the other part of this though 80 seconds like unless you are at the end of the game you're not gonna run around for 80 seconds with borrowed time in a bottle like you're not gonna run around with it you're you're obviously going to get to a gen you're, you're gonna cleanse a totem that you just walked by you're gonna do one of any of those things um so, but it, it sounds terrible, but I, these are things that we're going to, to see uh, at, the, at the end of the game. Uh, base kit, borrowed time, off the record. Um, that's super strong. Like that's, that's, that's a body block, that's a free health state. Um, that's so many things and that's a long, long time. It is longer than DS lasts. Like, and <clears throat> it's gonna be problematic. Um, do I think that everybody will run off the record? I don't know. Uh, but but I think more people will. Um, Lucky Break, great for escaping and chase, but the effect quickly runs out. We're giving survivors a way to recharge Lucky Break. Each second spent healing another survivor increases Lucky Break's duration by one second. Um, uh, it, it's fine. It's a buff to the perk. Um, I, I, I don't see it often enough to where I think it's problematic. Um, pharmacy is to guarantee an emergency med kit the first time you search a chest, which you'd either hope no one takes before you need it or hide off in a far off corner like a med kit goblin um and that's fine like i know people who do run pharmacy having just being able to go into a match uh grab a chest and and have a nice med kit like uh for the match that saves a lot in the long run on 
uh, just blood points, which now is not such an issue anymore. But so now pharmacy will activate whenever you're injured, guaranteeing an emergency med kit when you search a chest. This effect will ha can happen multiple times in one trial. Good luck stealing my med kit now, Meg. Um, I've actually seen people uh, uh, come out and complain uh, about this uh, because I, really, unless you run perks this i mean i think there's three chests on the map maybe four if you um maybe four if an offering is played um and and so there there are chances there without like the rummaging stuff like that you won't even touch an actual chest um or someone's already taken your stuff but it also requires you to be injured for to get the guaranteed emergency med kit i guess at least it gives you a choice there i don't know um Either way, ph pharmacy um, got adjusted. Soul Survivor. Uh, in addition to hiding your aura, Soul Survivor will now increase your generator pure speed by 75% and your exit gate and hatch access speed by 50. These effectives are only active when you're the last survivor standing. Honestly, if you're working on a gen and and, and not humping the hatch um, at the end of the game, uh, I, I don't want to tell you. It's going to help a lot uh, for in-game collapse if you were to run this. But I don't think people will. I don't think it's strong enough to warrant it. Um, if you go into a match all the time, it might be more common in solos, um, where you're a good solo survivor, or you generally outlast everybody else because you're stealthier, you know the maps better, or whatever. You're a better chaser. Um, then solo survivor might have some use, especially at in-game collapse, where you can really knock out an exit gate real quick and just not care about the hatch. <laughs> so it, it could have some, it could have some <coughs> good things there. Distortion. For those lights stay hidden, we've added a way to gain distortion tokens. Gain one token for every 30 seconds spent within the killer's terror radius. So you're going to passively earn tokens back. I think you start with three. So it will eat three barbecues, um, you know, or, or basically any aura reading perk. I don't know if it eats Nurse's Calling because that's more of a consistent aura. Not necessarily I perform an action like a hook and then I see auras on the map. Um, you know, or a bitter murmur, you know, like generator goes off. I can see everybody who was working on that gen. So, I mean, distortion is actually a very interesting perk, um, especially if you don't want to be seen by the killer and aura perks have been popular or whatever the case may be. Um, but does it break the game? I don't really think so. Uh, you'll passively gain tokens back for chases. Um, you know, every time you're one token every 30 seconds. Uh, but I don't think that that's busted or out of line. Um, Sooner or later, we'll find them. <coughs> a lot of talking. Sorry, guys. Um, in addition to lightweight existing effects, your scratch marks will be more sporadic, making you harder to track. Scratch marks will also fade um, five, four, three seconds sooner, up from one, two, three. Um, so it, it starts worse and gets better. Um, and oh but that it's just the wording really um so there's gonna be breaks in your scratch marks so lightweight is not terrible honestly like uh, once again for stealth stuff like lightweight can be your scratch marks go away faster um and uh and they're and they're lighter like uh, uh when you find someone who actually knows what they're doing and they're running lightweight it can be real hard to track them if they're if they're decent at the at chase um so buffed lightweight <coughs> Um, Deja Vu to help survivors power the three closest generators. Deja Vu will now grant a 5% repair, repair speed bonus to the revealed generators. Um, I, I guess that's fine, but but uh, but I don't I don't know. Like I don't see a bunch of people running Deja Vu for a 5% repair speed buff. Like it's not necessary. Um, it's not going to overtake the meta. So buff the Deja Vu. <coughs> no one left behind behind screen effects no one left behind will grant a seven percent movement speed bonus to any survivors you unhook so if you use no one left behind on top of base kit borrowed time on top of borrowed time like the killer won't even see the person you've unhooked because they'll already be across the map perk now activate when the gates are powered rather than open so um, and this isn't necessarily after the gates have opened and then you can maybe get a little value there and help someone up off the hook. Um, once the generators are finished, um, this becomes a thing which could get more value out of it. 
So if you if you were the dedicated borrowed time kid on your teams, you could very well be the dedicated no one left behind on teams as well. <laughs> um, dark sense, we change the way dark sense works. When the generator is powered, dark sense activates. The next time the killer comes within 24 meters of you, their aura is revealed to you for five, seven, 10 seconds, and then dark sense deactivates. Um, that's interesting. Um, uh, I don't even, I honestly, Dark Sense, I, I really don't even remember how it worked because I barely used it. I don't think I ever have. Um, so, but you get to see the killer's aura, um, when it's generated is powered. That's going to happen, um, as many as five times in a game where you're going to have location of where the killer is, what they're doing for 10 seconds. That's not unstrong. Like, I, I, I don't think it's busted, but, um, but having that information could be very good for people who are playing solo or newer to the game. <clears throat> in addition to the current effects, tenacity now reduces your grunts of pain by 75% when in a dying state. Combined with the increasing crawling speed, this perk can now be much more effective crawling with the killer. Tenacity is 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 fine, um, uh, and now that uh, it's harder to hear you, um, you know that's buff uh, to tenacity. Um, but uh, like, here's the thing. There's a bug that is still in the game to this day where there are times you cannot hear a survivor if they are on the ground. Like, not at all. Not like not like Iron Will was in play. Like, you can't hear them. Like, it's a bug that has been in the game for a long time and it's never been fixed. <sighs> um, so, being able to just, like, hop, skip, and jump around the map on your guts um, while you're bleeding out... I mean, that's fine. I mean, people use Tenacity and then, you know, pair it with, I believe, like, flip-flop and things like that. And, um, like, I mean, it, it does have a thing, but, I mean, you, you really have to complement it with other perks for it to be appropriate. And I don't think enough people are willing to, you know, set up a Tenacity build unless they are just, you know, constantly getting slugged. Um, and, and that might be the situation. Then Tenacity is a great perk, you know. Uh, tenacity, Unbreakable, uh, Flip-flop, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, hope. Hope is great for those who like to make late game saves, but the limited duration causes it to expire at inconvenient times, since first only used for the end of the game, we've removed the duration entirely. So there is no duration to hope anymore. Um, like, once again, it's a speed up uh, thing and help people. I, I, you know, it's hope. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen it used. Um, I mean, I'm sure that there are people out there who, who run hope in their builds because that's what they do and that's what their build is and they're a special snowflake, but like, it's just, I, it's hope. Um, overzealous in the current state, cleansing a totem that grants you a repair speed bonus of 6, 7, 8%. Now that bonus doubles if you cleanse a hex totem. That's a lot. Um, but it's another reason yet again to not run hex perks. Not only is Rune going to be absolutely worthless, but if you run a Hex perk and she cleanses it, like, that's a, that's a nice chunk um, if you cleanse the Hex totem. Like, that's crazy. Now that bonus doubles. So, 16%. That's a lot. <laughs> um, and that perk just got released. They've already buffed it. So, um... It's whatever. We're going to live forever, much like barbecue. Perks features are matched with blood point bonus. You don't want blood points to dictate what perks are used. When I play killer, and when I play survivor, like I, I would want to use We're Going to Live Forever because I would want to maximize my blood point gains. But, you know, there just wasn't a whole ton that I felt like it was doing outside of that. I mean, it, there's some stuff. But, um, uh, you know, like you do some body blocking, whatever. Uh, change will release at the same time as the progression overhaul, which is expected to cut the grind by about 75%, with matchmaking incentives provided an additional avenue for blood points. So, um, since they are not requiring as many blood points anymore, they're removing this from the blood point bonus from this as well as barbecue. Um, and additionally, actions previously granted token will now activate a perk's secondary effect. While active, healing a survivor from the dying state grants them the endurance effect for six, eight, 10 seconds. The secondary effect of we're going to live forever then deactivates. <sighs> so yet another way to get borrowed time in a bottle. You've got base kit. You can run borrowed time on top of that and make it stupidly long. You've got off the record that gives you 80 seconds of an extra health state. 
and now we're gonna live forever. Um, if someone picks you up off the ground, you can't immediately be slugged down. You will get the borrowed bottle, you know, borrowed bottle time, bottled borrowed time, excuse me, and uh, and be able to escape. Like, so I, I do expect to see this, um, like, and I'm also a little surprised that they did change it uh, because barbecue didn't get any additional benefits and, and it was mainly for information and blood point generation. Here, um, it was for blood point generation and, and then you could, like, you're rewarded by, by actively playing the game and I think that's good. Here, just another, another, um, another extra health state for a survivor. Um, I, that doesn't feel great, but it's whatever. Um, so that's that's every that that's from start to finish. That's everything. Um, like I, there's there's some things I don't agree with. There's things that I strongly agree with, um, and and for both sides. Like there's there's things that I agree with on the killer side. There's things that I agree with on the survivor side, and then there's things that I, I disagree with as well. Like I, um, but I, I see clearly what they're trying to do. Um, I, they, this is something honestly. Like if they could pull it off and and do like uh, perk changes every six months to keep the meta fresh. I think it would be amazing for the game. It would be amazing for the longevity of the game. And instead of all of us complaining about our favorite four to six perks getting nerfed, now we can use other perks because they're updating other ones. Like, and and uh, ideally that's going to make um, the gameplay more interesting. And now we're not grinding so much and we're getting better rewards for it. And we don't have to like, uh, there, there's a lot on the table here. Um, Killer's gotten some slight speed um, buffs which are welcome but not overpowered um, and and uh, survivors got base kit borrowed time and and some pretty crazy things to to add on to that uh, uh, that status you know basically bottle borrow time uh, whether it's off the record whether it's we're gonna live forever uh, whether it's using borrowed time on top of base kit borrowed time like we're it's against good teams we're gonna see problems like that's gonna be everything that they've done in this game to make it easier for solos and new players really really just gets blown up when you get four people who know what they're doing and are on comms it's the truth like there's there's nothing that could be argued to say that you do not have a better chance of winning um if you're playing with a group of four good friends of three good friends than if you're just roaming around in the fog with randoms regardless of your skill like it's it's just it's a no-brainer um and so having four people that have like multiple different ways to gain extra health states up on top of you know add-ons for med kits and things like that like I, I, I foresee some issues there, but I'm hoping for the best. I like what Behavior's doing. I like the direction they're heading in. Switch up the meta every six months. You know, there's so many perks in this game and I have never used 75% of them easily. I can easily say that uh, because most of them are worthless. Absolutely worthless. They do nothing for you. They're, they're fringe meme stuff that people threw tarts at dartboards. Like, yeah, we needed a third perk for this new killer let's put that one up on the board uh and uh, same thing for a survivor i mean that's no different for them like you know uh, close to uh I, I would i would genuinely say 80 to 90 percent of the perks in the game are are either not used or, or grossly underused outside of when people are leveling up and don't have any choice but to use something because they need to fill the slot so good on you behavior there's a lot of good in here there's a lot of stuff we'll have to wait and see about but this is the direction the game should be heading. Um, so that's where we're gonna wrap it up. This has been long enough. Obviously there's a lot of stuff to go over and I ramble a bit, but thanks for hanging in. Those are my thoughts. Uh, we'll see you on the next Bronzecast. Much love from the old man.